Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome again to our webinar series presented by Ana Jiménez University. As you know, a global um, the university is a global member of the Global Trade Chamber, and we're very happy every month to receive faculty members, executive directors from the school that um, every time present a different topic regarding education, business, marketing, any possible tool that is going to help you to improve to uh, educate yourself, to empower you, but especially to help you manage your business. So without uh, further introduction, I wanna talk about my special guest. Uh, she is uh, Ms. Marcela Munera, uh, who uh, dedicated over two decades of her career to field of education. With a background in psychology, she has served as a campus president and educator Ms. Monera has a background in operations, leadership, and a passion for training and development. She has proven herself to be a successful and a strategic leader in her field. Throughout her career, Ms. Monera has focused on reducing employee turnover and fostering a positive work environment. Through her innovative leadership and mentorship initiatives, she has been able to cultivate a culture of growth and development within her teams. Ms. Morena's leadership has also translated into positive fiscal results for the institutions she has worked for. By implementing, implementing cost-saving measures and increasing efficiency, she has been able to drive financial success while maintaining high standards of education, compliance, and student satisfa satisfaction. Overall, her career as a campus leader and educator is a testament of, uh, to her dedication, expertise, and commitment to excellence in the field of education. So her ability to inspire and empower others has made her a respected and admired leader in the industry. So let's welcome Ms. Marcela Munera, who is now serving as a campus director for Energy Mendes in Miami, right? Welcome, Dr. Minera, Munera. Thank you so much, Maria Rene. What an introduction. <laughs> I am so happy to be here with you guys and being able to uh, do the presentation today that I have, especially for women in leadership like myself and you, of course, and also being uh, the month of May being Mental Health Awareness Month. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Well, May is a Mental Health Awareness, also Mother's Day. It's a combination of the, of the activities this month that we're gonna be celebrating. But I believe um, everything related with mental health is so important in our community, in our business community, because sometimes we are so stressed about how to manage a company and we don't really find the balance that we need internally. It's not just about you know working every day, but it's also about how we feel every day. So I believe your presentation is going to be um, just on time, uh, not just because of this month is a mental, mental health month, but also because it's important for everybody to understand the importance of this uh, topic. So without further um, introduction about this topic, I'm going to let you uh, do the presentation and I'm going to be here hearing everything and taking some notes. Absolutely. So thank you again for the floor and for allowing me the honor of uh, doing a, a small presentation about uh, how to take care of better ourselves, how to manage challenges that come to us. So for example, we're starting off with, you know, overcoming challenges, tips for stress management and self-care in the month of mental health awareness. And of course, it's Mother's Day month. So Mother's Day is right around the corner. And uh, in honor of all the mothers out there who do so much, aunts, uh, abuelas, grandmothers, all those who have a, who are our support system, sisters-in-laws, um, you know, everyone that really does, uh, it takes a village and uh, we help, you know, help each other so much. And uh, that's what's important. It is important to come together and find a network to, to gather around one another. So I'm going to start out with, you know, how do you overcome burnout? Um, in the past 20, I would say 25 to 30 years, women have been leading the workforce. Over 57% of women nowadays are leading the workforce. However, not many women are in leadership positions. About maybe 25 to 32% 
are in a leadership position. In the past five years, it has incremented a bit before about 10 to 15 years ago, it was about eight to 10%. So women have come a long way. Women are um, taking on leadership roles more than ever. They are uh, mothers, their wives, their sisters. And now they're, we're also taking care of our elderly parents as they age. So a lot of things come into play when women take on that leadership role. Uh, and it's not only just maybe 30, 40, 50 years ago, women were administrative assistants, secretaries, and receptionists. Nowadays, women take on CEO roles, COO roles, they're chief financial officers, they're presidents of companies, and they're leading the way. Now, with that, as they say, comes responsibility. And it's added responsibility on top of the fact that a lot of us are mothers. And so the balancing act comes into play when it comes to long hours at work, when it comes to high levels of stress, the pressures of work-life balance and family responsibilities on top of what women are dealing with and the challenges and the um, the day-to-day deadlines that women come into play. So leadership role as a woman, what does that mean? That burnout can have consequences on a woman, but women don't tend to say, I'm tired, I'm burnt out. Women don't tend to say that they are, uh, they have excessive amount of workloads or even take a day off because they think that it's not okay to do it. So what happens when a woman um, takes on too much for, for what they are dealing with right now and on top of that have an excessive workload? They're, they have a decreased job performance. They, are, they have low productivity. And then those things, as uh, it progresses, it takes on physical and mental health issues. And so what are the, the things that women are challenging, uh, they're, they're, they're facing right now? What are the challenges that women face day to day? Well, for one, um, they have a gender bias, feeling that some roles are designed for men more than women. So as women step into those roles, they are, that's a big challenge because they feel that maybe they can't do it or that they're not the right fit. Another thing that women chase, uh, that women uh, are faced with more and more and more is the imposter syndrome. Women a lot of times feel that they're not good enough to uh, fill uh, that position or that role. Uh, In addition to that, women feel that The imposter syndrome, again, is, oh, my goodness, I shouldn't be in this role. I'm. When are they going to find out that I'm not good enough for this role? And so those are things that uh, women's mental health uh, becomes more and more of a challenge for on their day-to-day activities. Now, more than ever now, uh, there's a lack of representation in leadership roles. Like I said, 37% of women now are in leadership and over 47% uh, to 50% of women are in the the workforce right now. So that's come a long way in the past 20 to to 40 years. In addition to that, there's a, like I was saying, there's a work-life balance, not having enough time for family, personal matters, for parents, and to do what makes them happy. So what are some of the things that women can do more and more to overcome those challenges and the burnout? Well, number one, it starts from the top. You need to find a a support system, build a network around you, seek mentorship from colleagues that work with you and that understand more and more what your role is, what you're going through on a day-to-day basis. There are so many friends out there as well, our network of friends that, you know, there's uh, um, different types of um, mentorship programs. You know, they have United Way Women's Circle. They have um, a ton of uh, other um, nonprofit organizations that like to rally around women and say, we're business uh, leaders. We're going through this situation. Join us. 
that's an opportunity right there. And then on top of that, I say that you need to prioritize yourself, take care of yourself, be able to say, I need a break, even if it's for a walk outside for 10, 15 minutes, disconnect, sit outside, have a cup of coffee, and try to prioritize self-care. Uh, advocate for yourself. That's another uh, opportunity to overcome those challenges of the day-to-day -day activities. And then, you know, a lot of women don't really, are not used to asking for what they want, or they're not used to asking for, for things. They just sit down and wait until somebody offers them. Well, women nowadays have more of a voice and uh, you need to speak up and say, this is something that I can't take on. I've got too much already on my plate or simply say, no, I can't do it. It's just not realistic for me to, to do it. Uh, but one of the things is have a voice, advocate for yourself, um, set boundaries, set boundaries at work, set boundaries at home. Uh, and then again, try to find somebody or a group where you can delegate different activities or different priorities. There are times when women know in leadership that it's them. They have to be the ones to do the job. But there are other opportunities and there are some things that you can delegate and you have to find a good circle around you and people that you know that are going to get the job done. And that takes on uh, knowing who is going to be part of that circle, knowing who's going to be part of that support group. And then in addition to that, being able to be comfortable with delegating those tasks to different people. Because there are a lot of women that take on all the responsibility of one thing. And then that's just, it causes burnout. So being able to know exactly what uh, needs to be done in a priority level and being able to delegate it is essential for not, you know, and avoiding burnout. Um, what are other some, some things that stress management, for example, women in leadership roles often put the needs of others before their own. And as mothers, as daughters and sisters, uh, I think that we've all been there at one point or another where we try to please their people, please people, please everybody and be there for everyone. But at the end of the day, um, nobody is there for us. So my recommendation and my tip of the day is know how to put yourself as well first. Know how to find quality time for you. Know how to find quality time and make it for your partner, for a friend, for, you know, for example, uh, for your kids. And if you have more than one child, then knowing how to prioritize time with each child as well. And then also trying to find something that makes you happy. If making, uh, you know, um, for example, there's a personal hobby. I love crafting. I think it's uh, something that soothes me. I think that it's uh, something that makes me comfortable. The time goes by and it's crafting, whether it's making soap or baking, something that's going to really soothe you is important is to find yourself. Take the, take a drive. Um, that's another thing. Take a drive somewhere, sit at the beach, watch the waves. That's another stress management uh, tip. Uh, and just finding you, having time for you is essential. Exercising. I know a lot of people don't have time to exercise. I particularly find it very challenging because of my work hours to find the time to exercise because my day is different every day. So I cannot have a routine, but you can definitely make a little bit of time, at least 10 or 15 minutes a day to go on a walk, to do a little yoga, even if it's at home, doing a little yoga, practice breathing exercises when you're overwhelmed. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed sometimes when you have projects coming at you, when you have uh, people asking for different things. There are different deadlines that need to be met. And then you have a staff of employees that need something. So those are, uh, there are times where just breathing technique, when the world gets too overwhelmed, 
when you get overwhelmed, take a little bit of, of a breather. And just for five minutes, learn how to breathe. And definitely it'll make you feel a lot better. It automatically just suits you and makes you a little more comfortable. Then, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's about practicing, Maria Rene, it's about practicing mindfulness and self-care because preventing burnout is essential for everybody, not just for women, but for women in those leadership positions to achieve and be successful. It is creating a positive environment for yourself. At the end of the day, it's creating a work, a positive work environment uh, for the staff around you. You definitely need a, a few things, which is being empathetic and being a good listener. And one of the things that I try to create wherever I'm at is that the people around me are happy working and that they're able to come to work and, and smile and be themselves and be happy doing the job that they love. It is essential for having productivity, accountability, and good positive results. And then, you know, you have to lead with energy, passion, and resilience. That's something that uh, creates positivity around you. And then it all unfolds um, into outcomes. Um, I always say that taking care of yourself is not a luxury. It's a necessity for being an effective leader. So it's important to talk to some, someone who understands that there is a unique pressure about being a woman in the, uh, women in leadership. But, you know, there are so many people out there that also are just like you and can provide a lot of valuable insight. And, uh, and then to hear your story a lot of times or hear other people's stories, you don't find yourself being so alone in your role. And, you know, prioritize your workload. Uh, say no when it's necessary. It's important to, you know, be able to say, well, today I'm not going to be doing this. If I can put it for tomorrow or I can do one, two, and three and leave four, five, and six for later on or next week. And those are, you know, a few tips from me about being able to better take care of yourself and uh, tips on stress management and actually avoiding burnout at work. It's very common, but it's a great way to, to cope and, and, and overcome that. Beautiful. You know, um, the, all the, the tips that you mentioned, Marcela, are so important that sometimes we, we take it for granted. Like we don't have time for exercise. We don't have time for meditation. We don't have time for this because we're so busy every day that we don't really really um, think about the importance of organizing your day. And part of your priority should be dedicating some time for yourself. That's absolutely um, correct. I have a couple of questions here uh, that the uh, people was asking and we're gonna share with you. Absolutely. The first question is, how can companies better support women in leadership roles to prevent burnout? Oh, wow. It's important for, for companies to actually have, um, you know, these kinds of workshops and have a timeout. Uh, there are many companies that um, actually support uh, a little bit of um, uh, what I call a timeout. And what is a timeout that is on campus? They bring somebody who will do a, a group meeting but it's all about par partnering together, working better together, and then make it fun and exciting. A lot of times uh, the HR department does it. And so in order for you to have more of a flow, have more meetings, provide more meetings where everybody comes together to talk and discuss different things that are going on and making sure that uh, people are happy when they go to, a, to one of those meetings. Great. That's a great answer. Another question I have is, what are some effective strategies for women to prioritize self-care and avoid burnout in high-pressure leadership positions? That's kind of important. Absolutely. Um, well, definitely, um, based on, on people that I know and myself, personally speaking, just try to find the time. It's hard 
I know it's hard to find the time, but definitely find time, make the time to just take care of yourself. There are times where if you're in a, in a place where you can just walk outside and take a walk around uh, the building or your office space, uh, just disconnect for five, 10 minutes, disconnect from the situation that you're in. It's helpful. Um, grab a cup of coffee, call somebody, talk to someone who is able to listen and give you a little bit of a, a support system. You know what, that you're mentioning about disconnecting from the computer or technology or your phone. Something that happened to me a few days ago is that uh, by accident, of course, I forgot my phone. So I left it at my office and then I had a meeting. When I realized I didn't have my phone, obviously it was too late because I was not at the office anymore. The point is that at the beginning, I was so stressed about not having my phone because oh, really the phone, uh, it became more like a... a technology dependent 24 seven, right? Absolutely. So you need to be, you use your phone for everything to take pictures, take notes, uh, you have emails, WhatsApp, messages, text, social media, everything is in your phone. It's really a mini computer what you have and you are becoming very dependent on that. So at the beginning I realized that I was very stressed out about not having the phone, about not uh, knowing all the numbers by memory because right. I also noticed that I just dial automatically without memorizing the numbers. But you know what? Something interesting that happened to me after a while, not having my phone, because I was like probably three hours without a phone, I started feeling, okay, in peace. I was not stressed anymore. And I just relax. And I noticed that, you know, sometimes you don't have the time to do it because you right. are using your phone. Sometimes even for relaxing, you are using your phone. So, but it's crazy, but I decided to, you know, because I, if that happened to me, I decided every day when I get home, I'm just going to disconnect from the phone because it's too much. Even though you're using your phone for relaxing purposes, you can find other ways to do it. So oh, that's a good point what you mentioned, um, the, the part of the, the disconnected, disconne uh, being disconnected from the technology or sometimes just being disconnected in general from everything. That's going to give you some peace. I have another question. Um, how can organizations address and combat gender bias that may contribute to low morale? Well, definitely. Um, there are specific companies, for example, uh, that, you know, that know that there are certain positions that men occupy. And women have that uh, you know, that feeling or the identity that, oh, well, this role is not for me. This role is only occupied by a man. And, you know, more and more companies are opening up senior positions, um, VP positions, uh, president, you know, you're, you're up there and it's everybody. Women are, are more and more running, you know, institutions or running uh, companies more and more. You, you're seeing that in the past maybe 20 to 25 years, you're seeing a lot more of that. And, you know, in order for companies to, to see, it's about finding, knowing, being in the community and talking about who they are, putting their mission out there, their vision, and showing off all the opportunities that that company has to offer for women in leadership. Overall, it's for everyone. But when women see, women in leadership see, wow, that's a woman running a specific A, B, and C, or those are women running, you know, educational institutions, marketing firms, law firms, uh, you name it, PR firms, then that's where women say, wow, I do have an opportunity to be part of that. That's so but good. it takes a lot of openness and being out there for companies to do that and to be visual and to show off what actually, what opportunities there are for women. And what role do uh, mentorship and support networks play in helping women in leadership navigate and overcome challenges and being overworked? Oh, definitely. Uh, you need a network. It's like, you can't do it by yourself. That's... Well, nowadays, it's, it's not possible. 
you have to have a group of people. You have to have a group of women join a women's group. I am guilty of, you know, before I, you know, years ago, I thought that I could do it all and I uh, just have a, a best friend and talk to her about it. But as you progress, you need people to know to be like you. You need people. You need a support group. Join as many groups as you can. Join chambers, just like uh, Global Trade Chamber. And then from there, you meet women exactly like you in leadership uh, that are directors, that are uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, that share the same experiences and can actually help you and provide guidance, mentorship, a network of opportunities and possibilities, and just being a part of that culture, like I call it, it's a tribe. Uh, that's a healthy. That's that's something that you know nourishes you, and and helps a lot. So find a network, find your tribe, find a group of people that can mentor you, that can give you advice, and that is is going to be a game changer. And that is very important, uh, and it's one of the reasons we decided to create the Women in Business Division here at the Global Trade Chamber, because we noticed that as a, as a group of women in business, we have a specific uh, need, we have different needs, we have different support, Absolutely. and it's not the same like a working, you know, in, with the general population, but having this group of uh, entrepreneurs and all female, we really help each other, and uh, we empower each other. So we do several activities um, uh, in the women in business, and I was uh, telling you about this. We have events now uh, nationwide, actually global, because we, we do a uh, women business expo, we do conferences, and we bring a group of uh, speakers uh, that travel with us to different cities, and we present these shows, we call it the road show, and so far has been very successful. We are building and growing every time our global network of female entrepreneurs. And we are very happy to not just connect uh, with women in different cities and countries, but also we're happy that we're accomplishing our mission of empowering empowering and uh, educating women in business. So that's very important. And the, the today's topic, I believe, is incredibly important for everybody. Uh, you mentioned at the very beginning, Marcela, the importance of delegating responsibilities. And that is for sure, you need to delegate responsibility. But sometimes that's the problem. How you can delegate responsibilities when the team is not performing the way you expect. So how can you replace the team? Would you replace the team? What you can do in those type of situations where you're trying to delegate responsibilities, but those, uh, let's call it the team you're trying to delegate is not responding the way you want. That's a great point because I've been there and you have to create that environment by holding accountability. So you have to be kind of like a mom, you know, when you start creating and building a team around you and you have to say, well, how, if I give you this responsibility, you have to wait and see how that person is going to take on that role and run with it or not and just wait. And if you see as a director, as a leader, that the team, you may have a team of five, 10 people but maybe out of that 10% are really not pulling their weight or you know for a fact that they can, then you have to really, you, got, you have to do two things. One is coach them, train them, mentor them, and set the expectations. You have to set a bar, set an expectation as to these are the roles that you are assigned and these are my expectations for you. And I need these done. This is what I expect by this date so that you give them short deadlines, long-term deadlines. If that person, after mentoring them and coaching them and training them, are not really pulling their weight or providing the results that you, pro that you give them, that you set forth for them, then that's where you have to really think about changing them out or coaching them out. And then I love it. I love it. The that, that's the reality. Letting them know exactly. You, you, because at the end of the day, if you keep on a low-performing employee, 
you are only going to hurt yourself and then the company and then the rest of the employees are watching. So exactly. you have to make those hard decisions sometimes. And something also that is important about the mental health that you mentioned is the fact that how you can organize your day every day saying, okay, these are my priorities, uh, what I'm going to do first. How, how would you do it? What is the uh, Marcela Munera's day every day? How you organize your day? Oh, that is a tall drink of water <laughs> there. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you how I've, I've done it before and how I do it now because it changes depending on uh, you know your role, what your responsibilities are day to day, there are deadlines. So every day is different. But I have uh, two things that help me drastically and has changed. Uh, you know, I keep my little black book with me, which is my agenda. And I have a to do list, just like you would put it on your phone. So my agenda has notes as to the things that I have to follow up on day to day. My phone actually has notes that I have to, uh, you know, complete by urgent matters. And that's how I, I try to do it. I, I, I write myself notes. I do little post-it notes. So I know that as a priority, this is what I have to do today. And then my black book tells me what I need to follow up on. So it's very different, but I rely a lot on putting notes on what I need to do, writing notes to myself. Everybody has a different way. Uh, for example, I have a friend of mine that she has post-it notes. Uh, you know, she has post-it notes in front of her, in front of her computer. She has post-it notes in, at home um, that works for her. There's uh, other people that have a calendar in front of them, a huge wall calendar, door, you know, uh, from ceiling uh, to floor calendar, and they have <laughs> the month. I've seen that in, in friends' offices. So it really does depend on what your role is and how it's going to work. I what you're saying is, is, is uh, what you're saying is is true. Everybody has a different way to organize uh, the day and the task. Uh, I have seen people that they just organize in an agenda and they put everything there. Uh, something that I I learned and it worked for me, and I try to apply it every day now, is to start the day doing the task that I hate. <laughs> the ones that I don't want to do is the ones that I try to do first, so I don't keep suffering about it. Because right. when you have a task and, you know, you don't want to do it because it's something that you don't want to deal with that, it's like a torture in your brain, like, oh, I have to do it, I have to do it, I have to do it. But I learned that if I deal with that in that moment, I just don't need to deal with that anymore. Exactly. It, that's something that, you know, works for me, but not necessarily is going to work for everybody. But the point that, uh, that you want to highlight here, Marcela, is that you need to organize your day, no matter oh, what. Yeah. Absolutely. No right? matter what, you definitely need to organize your day. Absolutely. On a I have another the question the for the audience here. What are some practical tips and tools that women in leadership roles can use to manage stress, maintain life work balance? Well, I there are times where, you know, I, I do have a family, I have a son, I have a mother, and you know, I have siblings, I have, you know, different things that require my time with them. For me, um, the way that I can give them a little bit of part of me because there's what I call the love language. What is your love language with your people? The love language for me is that I cook. Uh, that's my love language. I like to cook for the people that I love. And the best way that I can do it is I'm going to get up an hour or and a half earlier so that I can leave my son or my husband their meal uh, for the day or pack them a lunch. And the best way that I can, you know, show my siblings that I care for them is come over and I'll, I'll make lunch for all of you on a Sunday. And so that is, that's the way that oh, I, I like it. To show can I be part of your family? <laughs> Absolutely. You're more than invited. Absolutely. <laughs> 
but it's one of the best ways that, you know, that you can have a work-life balance once in a while, leave work at noon on a Friday or take off a little bit earlier. If you leave at six or if you leave at seven, you know, leave at three o'clock one day that you know that you don't have anything else to do or, or, or take your laptop home and work from home the rest of the day. Those, you know, those obviously those are up to the employer and, you know, and yourself and what is viable or not. But, you know, though there are times where you just need to leave, you need to disconnect, you need to go and spend time with, you know, your family or even by yourself, take a walk in the mall for two hours. It works for some people. I have a friend of mine, all she, when she needs to break, she needs a break. She'll go and walk in the mall for two or three hours. She doesn't buy a thing, but she walks the mall for two or three hours and she said, I come out renewed. So I think that it's, it's about what really makes people happy. What's going to make you happy at the end of the day, if it's doing your nails or doing your hair or getting a facial and, you know, and you can do that once in a while or getting a massage, do it, book the time and do it and set yourself up where, oh my gosh, I have so many things to do. Just book it and do it. And you're going to make, you're going to feel a lot better when you do that. I love it, Marcela. What a wonderful interview presentation. All these tips are very important to follow. Just take notes. You know, you don't need to apply all of them, but if at least you remember one or two of what Marcela said today, it's going to help. It's going to change your life. And that is the idea, how you can be happy, how you can be um, healthy in, internally, externally, how you can be productive every day. So I love the presentation, Marcela. I think this is going to be just the first step because we're going to be doing a series with you after today. <laughs> we need Thanks to learn more me. about management, uh, time management, Absolutely. mental health. And you are a psychologist, so definitely you can help us a lot with uh, all these uh, challenges that we have as a women in business, but not just for women, you know, this is for everybody, everybody. how we can Absolutely. manage life better, right? Absolutely, it's for everyone, not just for women. The thing is that there's a tendency that women take on a lot because of the fact that we're mothers, that we're, you know, wives, that, you know, we have so many other things other than our jobs, but it, everybody has that too. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you said in one of the parts that they, as a, one of our problems is that we are multitask and we take everything on, on top of us because we want to handle with everything, right? Uh, and that's one of the problems. Even if you start delegating responsibilities at home, that's going to help you a little bit, don't you think, Marcela? Absolutely. You have to establish that at home. If I cook, you clean. If I do the laundry, you fold. And it's a balancing act among the, everybody, you know, that, that lives with you. So it's important <laughs> to have that, establish that, whether it's at work or at home. I love it. I love it. I definitely took notes. I'm going to apply some of them. And um, for sure, I'm going to go to my house and ask um, my husband to help me at home <laughs> with the things at home. At home. <laughs> you do that. You definitely do that. I'm glad that I was able to to provide a little bit of uh, of, of some tips for you today. Thank you so much, Marcela. So again, it was a pleasure meeting you and having Likewise. you as our guest uh, for uh, Ana Mendes webinar. Again, uh, if you want to hear more information about all the programs that the, the university offers, of course, Marcela can provide all that information as a campus director in Miami. But if you are looking for other cities or let's say that you're just looking for an online education, Ana Mendes also can provide that to you, uh, just visit the website that we're going to be sharing on the screen. Check out all the locations they have, check out all the programs they have, and you're going to be amazed about the, the different, not just programs in education about bachelor degrees, technical degrees, doctorate degrees, etc., but also that this school is bilingual. Uh, would you like to share some information about the school before we finish the seminar, Marcela? Absolutely. We're located here in Miami Lakes, uh, Florida. We are right off the Palmetto Expressway. We have been here in uh, Florida for 20 years. Uh, Ana Jimenez here is a staple in our community. 
And uh, we're a bilingual university offering, as you say, diploma programs, all the way from diploma programs to doctoral degrees. We're regionally accredited by uh, middle states. And also, you know, we go by that we are a Hispanic university. At the end of the day, we're Latinos and we teach in a bilingual uh, modality as well as in English. So check us out. Um, we're here, we are uh, open and we wanna make sure that the Hispanic community comes over because a lot of people don't know that they can come from their country and they think that because they went to school there, they can't do it here. And what we do is we help those people that come from their country and they bring us their credentials, their transcripts. And we say, wait a minute, you don't have to come here and work you know, uh, in a different environment from what you're used to. You can come here and you can complete and finish and continue and be able to be successful here too. So we're here for the Latinos. Um, we want to make sure that we help everyone around uh, our, the Hispanic community, that we're able to give them all the information that they need. Also for international students, we you know, uh, accept international students as well. And we offer a um, multitude of, uh, of programs. So for example, we have uh, diploma programs in pharmacy tech, med medical billing and coding, medical assisting, paralegal. We also offer undergraduate degree, bachelor's degrees in psychology, criminal justice. Uh, we also on um, social work and community service. Our MBA programs are in very high demand, which are um, you know specializing in accounting, in finance, uh, in again, in uh, social work and social work and community services, which is in high demand right now. And then our doctoral degrees, uh, we have the FNPs for the family nurse practitioner, and we have the DNPs for the doctorate in nurse practitioner, along with the DBAs as well. So doctorate in business. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. Great programs that we offer. <laughs> Absolutely, Marcela. Thank you so much for sharing all this information with us. And for everybody, once again, I invite you to visit Anna Gimendez University website to check it out and see all what they have to offer for you. Uh, we'll see you next time with another fantastic webinar presented by Anna Gimendez. And thank you, everybody. Take care and follow up all these steps. Bye. Thank you so much, Maria Renee. Have a good one. You too. It was a pleasure.